morning, everybody. It's cold out there. I wore a leather coat because I was freezing, and you know what leather coats do? They keep the wind off of you, and according to the weatherman, the wind is going to be awful today and even worse tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. Don't like it. And then I'd whine if I lived in Florida because then I'd be complaining because it's too hot. So just hush, Sherry. Just, just suck it up and deal with it. Just love it. Just love it. I hope that today you're going to love some things we're going to share with you because two people that I love celebrated their birthday this weekend. One of them became older than dirt when Brother Glenn Dinsmore became 80 years old. That qualifies as older than dirt. So, And then my bestie, Vicki Holyfield, became 59 again and again and again. But happy, happy birthday to y'all, and we're going to share some photos of the weekend celebrations, but even older than Brother Glenn and sweet bestie Vicki is the city of Ball Ground. The city of Ball Ground just turned 140. That's older than me. Oh my goodness gracious. So happy, happy birthday to the city of Ball Ground. And if you haven't gotten to know the city of Ball Ground, you should. And one of the ways to get to know it is to walk around town. And today you're going to get to meet somebody who has probably walked every inch of downtown Ball Ground. And he has a sidekick who walks with him. And you will get to meet Daryl McNeil and you will find out a little bit about his background and what he's doing to help others today. And I tell y'all all the time, I don't care who you are, I don't care what your job is, I don't care if you're Susie Homemaker, I don't care if you own a florist, I don't care what your job is, there's something you can do for somebody else. And I think it's important to share Daryl's story because he's doing for somebody else, and I think that's important. So, let's go through some photos today because I want to share some really good photos, but I want to share the cutest little girl ever, and no, it's not Xana. Xana's just as cute equally, but this child, her name is Merritt, and she was the hit of the birthday party. Forget the 80-year-old. People didn't even talk to him. They were too busy looking at Merritt, so we're going to go through some photos and share some of the really cool things we did this weekend. It is so strange because to pull off a surprise party when the party's being held across the street from your house. I don't know how they pulled it off, but I think they came pretty close to pulling it off. And it's because Ginger lives across the street from Brother Glenn, and Ginger is his sister, and so she did this. And her house was open to hundreds of people who came by to wish him well. So we're going to share the photos of this weekend with y'all now. And we've got some music that I want you to hear. And let me tell you the story about the music that's going to be played behind the pictures. I had to go to 330 Whitetail Ridge to pick up something. And I was like, wow, have not been in there since I sold the house. And I was a little bit nervous. I was a little bit emotional. And I was thinking, am I going to be able to do this? Well, the gentleman who bought my home has turned the downstairs into a recording studio. He's been report, recording gospel music for many, many years, and I said, how ironic is that? I fed every gospel group anywhere out of that kitchen, and we had great times. We had great memories there, and now my downstairs is a recording studio. So you're going to get to hear some piano from Deron Davis, who is a part of another project that you're going to get to hear in the next few days. So this week's going to be full of music. The end of today's program is going to be Brother Matt Dibler as he delivers a Christmas message. So it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. So I want y'all to sit back now, take a look at some of the pictures, and just listen to this piano music. I've been playing it since Thursday, and I will tell you, it will calm your fears. It will make you happy. It will even make you forget that traffic is as bad as it is around the mall. So just sit back and enjoy.
in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I grown up, grown up, grown up, up in every way, way, and every way, guarantee you. You're my grown up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown up, and you know I care. Cause it's you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you.
sister Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the hell Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. y'all have been to Bile Ground and how many of y'all have ridden down the street and said oh, look at those cute dogs that that guy and his wife are walking well guess what the guy's here and you're Charlie's not here I thought uh, Charlie was gonna come no Charlie <laughs> Charlie is at home and he's resting so uh, thanks so thanks for having me this is Daryl McNeil who has written a book and and I have to say uh, I'm so happy that you have formed a group it's a prayer partner group of men. We have, uh, we call it Ball Ground Men's Group. Mm -hmm. We meet on the first and third Thursday of each uh, month. We meet in uh, uh, the upper room where uh -huh. uh, Miss Lisa does yoga and right. J Dr. Bruce and Mary's place. And we meet there and uh, we meet at 7 a.m. Welcome to, the, it, was, it was formed. Uh, we just felt the need to pray over ball ground, um, be a group of men that could uh, share uh, their own ministry. Uh, we believe in Luke uh, 9 and 10 where um, Jesus sent out the 72 and uh, it was based on that. And so we come back together and say, you know, everybody's supposed to have a ministry and uh, we lift you up and, uh, and share and then we'd share some content. Um, like Dr. Bruce, Ken Laster, Mike Smith, um, and some others um, help help me with it, and um, it's, it's absolutely one of the best blessings that I get monthly. And and I can tell y'all, Mike Smith's been here, and y'all know it. And great, great pastor, great pastor. And when we open Malone's Pond, I ask Mike to open a prayer, and our builder, who is very faith based, they they called me and they were in tears. They said we've never opened a development that had the kind of feeling mm -hmm. that we had, and they said we can't even explain to you what that prayer he did meant to us. Yep. And that was so important to me because we're going to spend the next few years working in this development, and we knew that they were faith based and that they believed that you go by the way of the Lord. But boy, it was mm -hmm. Mike Smith can knock it out of the park. <laughs> Mike Smith can knock it out of the park. <laughs> he can, and uh, he was our, um, I was kind of the MC, but he was really the host of our uh, National Day of Prayer, the first one The only thing around. wrong with that was you could not hear mm -hmm. anybody, and mm -hmm. that was a problem. And so this year you're going to try to maybe go inside somewhere? We are. We're trying to. The uh, traffic, you couldn't ask trucks to shut up chicken truck we're trying to pray <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was kind of hard <laughs> it was that was a that was a challenge but yes, yes we're looking to go inside we uh confirming the venue and um we hope to um if if it's not if it's not a conflict with uh lee and Brittany Luss is going to mm -hmm. let us go into the wheeler house that'd be awesome yeah, yeah and, that would be awesome because and and i don't think we realize the traffic i know if i'm in my office and i have to step outside to, to talk to somebody if the reception's bad or something the traffic mm -hmm. does affect your calls so, it yeah, does yeah, it does yeah. but what a great group a lot of people showed up it was first time doing that and it showed you that we as a small community and i'd say a lot of people walked to the event mm -hmm. because a lot of people live close to town who are looking for somebody who thinks like they do mm -hmm. seven seven different pastors mm -hmm. from six different churches and we counted um somewhere around 75 people there mm -hmm. and um it was just a great day it's a great day um 
for ball ground, and uh, it was a great show of faith. It was. It was. Now, um, what else do y'all do for the community? Do you go out and visit with people? We um, we support Dominic's mission mm -hmm. with um, with volunteering mm -hmm. for uh, food delivery. Um, Dominic's is feeding over a hundred folks mm -hmm. a week, I think, and. Uh, then um, Mary, when uh, folks come in to uh, see Dr. Bruce, um, they, uh, we actually say we come to pay Mary and we get free chiropractic yes, care. Yes, yeah. But um, she'll find, she, she keeps her ears and antenna open to the what's needs, what needs we have. And we've, mm -hmm. we've um, added a deck to a home. We've rebuilt some fences. We've um, you know, cleaned, did some garbage cleanup. And mm -hmm. so we try to put the, our faith into application around mm -hmm. the community. Now, I'm going to ask you something, and I don't know if you know this or not. Have you ever heard Miss Mary sing? I have not, but I've heard she's really good. Oh, my gosh. She is like angelic. I'm getting cold chills thinking <laughs> about it. She came here, and she did music, and I was like, oh, my gosh, where did that come from? <laughs> it was so amazing. Mm -hmm. She is very... Tell her you want one of her I do. CDs. I yeah, do. Just I tell want, her. I, do. I want one. one. Because it, it delivers a message. But but that is, that's the other thing about the people that we choose to do business with um, from Jeremy Bruce. I mean, he he is our go-to guy. If you need a chiropractor, that's Jeremy. But he, he's a good guy. He's Absolutely. He's a good guy. Such a good guy. Great heart, both of them. Um, they're servants of the community, but uh, servants to Christ. Mm -hmm. um, always giving. Uh, always, you feel... But, you feel great just being around those mm -hmm. folks and then, you know, their care, you know, is good as well. But yeah. um, they're just some really good friends of mine. Really good people. And talking about Dominic's, this is a very, very small world. Saturday, I went to get a few things, a few things, understatement. By the time I got through with this <coughs> store, the back of the car was full. And I was like, why did I do this? But I did anyway. And I was in there and I go to a bread store and they give me their stuff that's almost out of date and I donate to Dominic's and I always put it in the little containers mm -hmm. out front. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to this guy in this store I was in and I said, what do you do with your overage? What do you do with your damage? What do you do? And I start giving him, <laughs> I start writing him his, you know, I'm like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do this. I'm telling him, well, you need to donate to Dominic's. And he said, are you talking about Dominic's in Ball Ground? I said, yeah. And he said, I live in Ball Ground. I said, well, shame on you. Y'all be bringing your stuff from here to Ball Ground to yeah. Dominic's. And he said, you know, I've asked about it, and it's in corporate for review. So anybody who has a business and has any mm -hmm. food items that are left over, talk to corporate, talk to your boss, talk to whoever. If you're the stop guy and you see a case that's damaged, don't put it in the dumpster. Give it to Dominic's right. because we don't care if a can's got a dent right. on it, you know. But it's amazing how, and and when he told me where he lives, very close to you. And it was funny as heck. And if I was, if you were gonna write me a check for five thousand dollars, if I could remember his name, <laughs> you wouldn't owe me a dime because I can't remember his name. I know his name, I think. Yeah, but, but yeah. <laughs> he lives near you. Yeah. And it was so funny because I said, what a small world. Because mm -hmm. he's just stocking. And I said, what do you do with your overage? What do you do with your damage stuff? And we started mm -hmm. a conversation about helping somebody else. And he said he volunteers at Dominic's. And I said, this is a very small world. It is. It's a very small world. Well, you're going to make the world a little smaller because you're going to open your doors and people's eyes to a story that mm -hmm. has a Christian background. Can you tell me about it? Uh, yeah, so this, um, this is a uh, story that um, is called um, Lessons Learned. I don't know if you can see this. And let me see the cover. Who is that young man? Uh, I think it's my alter ego. I'm not sure it's, uh, who I'd like to look like, I think. <laughs> but, uh, that ain't happening. But uh, <laughs> he's, he's it cute. is a Christian adventure story. Uh -huh. And... Um, the the character main character's name is William Briggs, uh -huh. and um, he uh, faces both challenge physically, mentally, relationship wise, as he volunteers to go on a mission trip mm -hmm. from his church, and it's the first time he's away from home, and so he has relationship dynamics with himself as well as the people he's going with. He has somewhat of an adjustment he has to learn to make with his earthly father, which is the example of his godly father, mm -hmm. who, and they, 
he learns in the end that his relationship with his earthly father is symbolic and the same as his godly father in that if you um, have the right relationship with your godly father, all other relationships work out. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he um, it's a young, young man and a lot of young men, they face those challenges in life where where do they get their truth? Mm -hmm. They want to be grown man, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they still have to rely on that. And so his family and his old grandpa and um, his, his sister being his best friend, they, they talk to him and keep him informed, keep him encouraged. Um, and so it's a Christian adventure story that at the end, uh, God is first f and family aligns as well as relationships. And he um, it's hoped, hopefully a series, mm -hmm. and um, the, it's called Lessons Learned. And uh, so the lessons that he's imparted along his journey not only helps him during the journey, but in life. Mm -hmm. And um, we hope that um, in any, you know, I'm also uh, involved as an area representative with FCA. Mm -hmm. uh, Tell us a little bit about FCA. Fellowship of Christian Athletes was started in 1954. Mm -hmm. um, at a time today when athletes are told they cannot pray on the field. Correct. So and what are you facing with that? Well, it's volunteer, mm -hmm. and so if they want to volunteer, they can do what they can. Mm -hmm. um, they can meet before hours, after hours, and um, we call we meet together with uh, what we call a huddle, mm -hmm. and so it'd be a player student huddle where we ask, hey, what's going on? You know, what can we help you with? We show them application through prayer, through um, the Word of mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. and uh, we visit, and um, the Lord does the rest, and it just multiplies with people. Mm -hmm. And then we also have character education, um, that the curriculum is amazing with FCA, and then um, coaches huddle. So we lift up coaches, who's coaching the coaches? Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of my role. I spent years in corporate America and as a coach and corporate officer, and so, um, just felt the call to expand this into that, and so any of the any profits that go from this book go to FCA. Mm -hmm. and, and when you leave here, you're going actually to I'm FCA. Going, I'm going yeah. to an FCA meeting at Cherokee High School in mm -hmm. Cherokee uh, in Canton, and um, meet the new football coach. And how many children are involved in this? How many kids? How many kids out of off of a team, what's the percentage you think who want to get involved in, in being a Christian athlete? Uh, I would say at probably a third mm -hmm. um, would, would be really open that have been churched or mm -hmm. want to continue to do it, recognize mm -hmm. the need. Mm -hmm. um, I think most are very open to it and uh, we live in a different time where um, coming out of COVID things went weird. Mm -hmm. um, where people that were going kind of backed off of going to a church family. We support our local churches too in the, in the youth ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, turn, we kind of hand that over, you know, to them. And so I would say that, um, you, know, it's, you, know, the, you know, the harvest is great. It's mm -hmm. the workers that are few, mm -hmm. as we know in Matthew 9. And um, I, th I think that um, this, this book or this involvement with FCA is, is a chance to um, not only spread God's word, but the lessons, but it's also, um, it, there's so much truth that people can use to live and they're searching for things. Young people are searching, you know, with social anxiety to mm -hmm. temptation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm hopeful that uh, you can pass these lessons on and uh, be involved. It's being present. He's cute. <laughs> If you're a 10th grade girl and you're sitting out there, you're going to want to read this book. <laughs> if you're a college student, you're going to want to read this book. Now, tell me, how do people get this? I know that you have it um, available on, is it on Amazon? Amazon. On Amazon? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Amazon. Go to Amazon.com on your account. And you can look up uh, Lessons Learned by Daryl McNeil. And, um, and, and you're going to have a book signing in ball ground. We're looking to have a ball ground book signing on um, January 19th. January 19th. Um, I want to shout out to Evelyn Calhoun. She's kind of my PR person for it. And um, she's amazing. If you don't know Evelyn, you need to get to know Evelyn. And, she is uh, beyond amazing. <laughs> uh, she's a superstar in a, <laughs> yeah, in a different world. And yeah, uh, yeah. so we're planning maybe that at the Barrel House. And... Um, but you go on Amazon.com and you can do paperback, you can do hardback, you can do on your Kindle Unlimited. 
Um, different prices there for that. And then uh, we're putting it on audio books. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been asked to do that. So we'll do that as well. And then... Um, if, if I got to do it, it would need to be on audio books because Evelyn rides with me a lot and she'll <laughs> say, you're going to get us killed. Quit texting, quit reading, quit sending. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you need... We need, to, an audio we need to get you yeah. an audio book for <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so um, she's... Can you tell us about your mom? Because before we... Yeah. I, I don't want you to leave her out because she's a part of why you do what you do. Yeah, my mom, um, a lot of support family-wise. And uh, my mom was is a career educator, retired, and uh, she always wanted to write a book. And um, so I'd hear about it. And then I kind of got me wanting to write a book. Um, and I thought I would write a book. And um, I knew... I met a guy that has helped me write a book. He, he's out of uh, Josh's office and uh, my son-in-law. And um, he, uh, Pete, and he has uh, been in the publishing business. And he said, do you have the world? Do you know what you want to say? I said, mm -hmm. I do, mm -hmm. he, but I don't know how to do it. And he mm -hmm. said, oh, I know that part. Mm -hmm. I said, oh. Mm -hmm. So he hooked us up. And so uh, mother was said she was more of an editor type person. And I had more of an idea thing. So. Uh, my grandson at the time, him, um, Briggs, uh, was, was about three years old, I think, and we would share stories, Bible stories. We would share, you know, things. And, you know, being, old, being a grandpa, Paul, you know, it's, it's kind of neat to have a second chance mm -hmm. to impart wisdom if you have any. And so he stopped me and asked, could we pray for the kids of Hurricane Michael? My wow. wife, Sherry who also is a great inspiration. My, all my family is, my kids um, as well. But they, um, she was gathering um, supplies, and mm -hmm. one of them was school books mm -hmm. for the people who had been displaced, their school had been displaced, or they had been displaced. And um, so I thought, wow, I got the story now. So it was, from that on, I, I went to build the world about how I could take the opportunity and give him uh, and my granddaughter, Sully, a, um, a chance at uh, maybe something I'd learn, maybe mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I learned it probably too a long time later than they're learning it. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the end of the day, it's what you, what did you learn from your journey that mm -hmm. you could maybe save somebody? Wow. I think that's coaching, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how to do this so that you don't have to go through the pain of learning it the bad way. Oh, wow, wow. Now, when we finish this, are we going to be encouraged, inspired? Are we going to be sad? Is there anything about it that's negative at all? No, I think you just read the whole uh, book in the fact that you, you know, the very start, you're, th you're wondering why he has conflicts. And at the end, you realize that he doesn't. That in the end, it's, it's the same story we all face, whether it be with parents or people at work or our bosses. For the most part, mm -hmm. people are good, mm -hmm. for the most part, mm -hmm. and they're trying to help you. And also, you're not received all the time well, and you have to learn how to get over that. Mm -hmm. And so there's these little twists and turns, and you're saying, gosh, that's kind of different. And then at the end, uh, the realization is that if you put God first, um, everything else works. works. So it's... it's um, it has some adventure, it has a little danger, it has relationship conflict, it has uncomfortable stuff, but it's, that's what life is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, it's the first, hopefully, of, 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 of many. I want to continue to have uh, William go on a, a, a new mission trip mm -hmm. to a different place, learning, learning more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you watched the movie um, Sound of Freedom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there, you know, if that man had not put his life on the line and gone into the territory to rescue those children, those children would mm -hmm. never have been saved. And and this young man, he, he what, what, how old is he in this book? Is he 23? Early 24? 20s, yeah. yeah. Okay. A 23-year-old can make a difference in somebody else's life who's 16, 17, and somebody said, why don't you do drugs? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And we all need somebody that we can look up to. Yep. We all need somebody who you can look up to. So, of course, you can let him grow. Yeah. And as he gets older, he'll get smarter. He'll get smarter. <laughs> He's smart in this book, but he'll get smarter. Yes. Because with age, we get wiser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is your mom still one of your biggest fans? Does she? Yes. My mom, yes. My mom is one of my uh, biggest fans uh, and critics. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that uh, is kind so of goes cool. double. Uh, my, both my parents, my mom and my dad. Um, my actually, it's um, it's kind of unique. We, uh, I think most families are this way. I know mine is where. Um, my wife is my biggest fan and, and critic as well. Um, mm -hmm. My kids, <laughs> Katie and Clint and Josh and Zan, same thing. Mm -hmm. Even Briggs and Sully have become a fan and a critic. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Charlie's probably my biggest fan. My golden <laughs> doodle. Charlie needs to be. Yeah, here Charlie's today. probably my biggest fan. Jolene's becoming a fan. My other <laughs> yeah. one, yeah. but Charlie, uh, we've only had two arguments in, our, in my whole time I've had him. He's almost ten. He won both. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And uh, no doubt. but uh, no, it's. Uh, it's been a great journey. To uh, I think probably I've grown more from mm -hmm. writing the book than I thought I would, mm -hmm. and um, I know that, that I could also do it a little different. You know, you can um, you can uh, and, and 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 sharing your faith is so broad and mm -hmm. so vast. It, you know, you're you know if you're in living the right way and you and you're continually repenting and trying to follow Jesus that, um, you know, your cup runneth over. And mm -hmm. so uh, there's plenty that I can continue to improve upon mm -hmm. and um, with the books and, and life as well. Who read the first, who read it first? Sherry. Okay. And did she cry? Was she smiling? <laughs> what, what was her first response? Because uh, knowing you and loving you, I want to know what her first response was. Uh, too wordy. Uh, too, wordy. Too, too wordy, yeah, a little bit too wordy, and that I had some run-on sentences. And she's my, her and Katie are my editors, oh, pretty much. Wow. Yeah, they, my daughter Katie and, uh -huh. and my wife Sherry. Uh -huh. um, Sherry's are that way, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, and, they are. Um, pretty much. <laughs> so um, she she edited it and um, would say, I think this is um, good. This is really good. I would I would look at that. And so mm -hmm. without that, um, you know, you don't really get the good baseline, and then. Um, there are then there are f there are a few um, programs out there that you can use that are that are artificial intelligence type mm -hmm. stuff that will mm -hmm. that will help you uh, <coughs> be better at editing the book, better flow. But Sherry was the first. She liked it. I was looking for really riveting, and she said it's very wholesome, very needed in today's society. Oh, okay. And so uh, that's you think possible. about it, yeah. you know there. Yeah. A lot of the a lot of books for for nine and up is what this is. Mm -hmm. um, young adult, uh, predominantly. They're not very wholesome. Mm -mm. They're not. They're they're. They may give you a false sense of reality. I think this one is 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 tells a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if if you're a fan like I was of Little House on the Prairie, every single mm. episode had something to teach your children. Exactly. Whether it be that the dad made a mistake and yep. then he righted that mistake or whether the kids did something and they had to say, you know, we did this. And and I think that's what we're missing in today's society from television to books. We're yep. missing Little House on the Prairie. We're missing the Waltons. We Ask are. me what I watch on Little House on the Prairie. There's still there's still a need for children to be taught yes. those lessons. Yeah. I miss those days. Yeah. Andy Griffiths was one of my mm -hmm. favorite mm -hmm. times. Have you ever been to Mayberry? I have not. I just love well, to go. Well, we went to Mayberry and were lucky enough to interview Thelma Lou, and she has passed away since then. But what a precious, precious lady. Yeah. And, and that atmosphere, now when, the weekend we went, it was Mayberry days and it was packed and we didn't know it was going to be so crowded. But um, it, that's what everybody wants to go back to, and I think that's what people love about Ball Ground. We're kind of a little bit Mayberry-ish. I think so. Yeah, and I think that's what makes it such a great city. Yeah, I think uh, when I first moved to, to Ball Ground, I was just trying to figure it out, you know, and I'd been living in, down in uh, Hickory Flat. Mm -hmm. and um, Bless your heart. Yeah, and it was just... The traffic. It became... Uh, <laughs> it, we, we almost got swallowed up in it, you know, and so... Yeah. Sherry had been going through there. Uh, she was working with Southeast Restoration at the time and um, was going back at the, through Ball Ground and found this little house. And mm -hmm. um, we decided we wanted to do that. And uh, Welcome to Mayberry. Yeah, welcome to Mayberry. <laughs> and uh, there was, there was uh, it's now, you know, like you say, I walk, I, I don't walk as much as Stephen walks, but I walk. Uh, yeah. Fifteen to twenty thousand steps a day. Wow! And the uh, golden doodles are right there with me, uh -huh. and uh, we walked this morning. And um, but it, a ball ground is neat. And I would add that the character uh, William Briggs lives in ball ground. Mm -hmm. So if you're from ball, if you're in living in ball ground, it mentions ball ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was kind of neat. That's so, cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. 
Well, I'm so glad you were here. And again, pick up his book. And um, book signing is going to be January the 19th in the Barrel House, which is right across from our office. And um, gift giving for Christmas. They mm -hmm. could pick one up from you, and it would be a nice gift. If you have a teenager in your house, it would be a really good gift. So there you go. You, you want to give, do you have a website or you have I, a phone number? I don't, but you can, um, you can, uh, yeah, I, you can call me or my, my email is uh, Daryl McNeil, D-A-R-R-E-L-L-M-C-N-E-A-L, -L -E the number 1212 at gmail.com. My cell is 678-458-3492. And if you come to Ball Ground, you'll see him walking. Yeah, you'll I'll see keep, him walking. I'll keep <laughs> one, in, I'll strap a couple on Charlie. That's right, there. that's right. We're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to share a message from Brother Matt Dibler. We've done this many Christmases, and I think we need to do it again because uh, as the season is upon us, it's not happy for everybody, but it is encouraging for everybody. No matter what you're facing, you know where your strength will come from, and you know that you're going to make it. So we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Today is what? Uh, when God dec decorates a Christmas tree, we talk about it. We talked about it in other Christmas times, but looking at it again from a different angle again. But I uh, want to go to one of the most familiar, if not the most familiar passage of Scripture in the Bible, and that's John 3, 16. But I want to back up to John 3, verse number 14, and read down through verse number 16. The Bible says, And as Moses, li Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, ever have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, the Bible talks about, in verse number 14, about Jesus Christ being lifted up. You'd have to go back to the Old Testament and study as the children of Israel were being bitten by serpents. They had to raise a brazen serpent. Moses lifted up that brazen, and everybody that looked at that serpent would be healed of that uh, serpent's bite and the venom that was uh, injected into them. They were healed of that. So that's what that was talking about. But it says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In this, Jesus had to be lifted up on a cross and die on the cross. He couldn't die in his sleep. He, he had to be lifted up as the Bible proclaimed here and uh, Jesus Christ was lifted up. He did die on the cross. He came to the world, yes, as a little baby in a manger. That was not Christ at the beginning. He, in verse, you can go back and study the Bible and study in Genesis where Jesus said, let us make man in our image. Who was he talking about? He was talking about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being eternally coexistent in the past where he said, let us. We are a triune being, body, soul, and spirit. And we're in his image. We are made in his likeness. Um, in this passage of scripture, we see that Jesus Christ had to be lifted up. When we think of decorating a Christmas tree, we think of several different things. We want a pretty tree. We want to put lights upon that tree. We want to put different ornaments on that tree uh, just to make it the prettiest tree we can possibly make it. Um, in this passage of scripture, we see that God decorated a tree by putting his only begotten son on that tree for us. And a gift that was to all people. We normally put our gifts underneath the tree. God gave him, put his gift on the tree, and that was Jesus Christ dying for us. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of eternal life is Jesus Christ our Lord. And, uh, and we see that um, Jesus Christ was given all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Everybody's included in this need for this gift. See, when we think of a gift, we try to get people what they want. We try to give people what they would like to have for Christmas. We try to find a want, not necessarily a need. As we just saw the f footage from Kentucky, there, there was a lot of needs, but there were some things that these kids wanted that they could never have had unless some of you had given what you gave and, and uh, donated the items that you donated. Well, God didn't look at what we wanted as such. He looked at what we needed. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need, one songwriter said it that way. Um, and so this gift and this tree that God decorated, he placed on it the gift that was the best gift and the greatest gift that was ever given, and that was his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. The gift was on the tree, not underneath the tree. Uh, and it was a gift that met the needs of the people. And and I love the, the fact that God gave this gift to everybody. This footage we just saw, there was... 
uh, 300 and some bicycles that were given and so many more people that would love to have had them, but there was not enough of that gift to go around. The greatest thing about the gift that God gave is there is enough. There was enough Jesus, and there still is enough Jesus to go for every, go around for every human being that has the need. Everybody that's born into the world is lost. I mean, they, they need a Savior. Uh, the Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man's sin, sin entered, in, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. See, the wages of sin is death. And it passed upon all men. So death passed upon all men. And so death is the penalty for our sin. But I love what Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The payment for sin is death. But what did Christ do? He died for us on that cross, on the tree that God decorated. And uh, you can look in three simple things you can look at on that tree. We see the love. I've said this before and I say it again, true love gives. We have teenagers and young people that get into arguments and fussing with those that they think that they're in love with. And they, they'll have these arguments and, and their, their arguments are over what they did not receive or something like maybe a gift or something they wanted or time or a phone call or whatever. True love doesn't take, true love gives. God so loved the world that he gave. That was the key, is that God gave to us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God gave, gave us this gift. And so the gift is free to all that calls upon it. And God's love allowed and caused him to give Jesus Christ. And what a, what a plan. We talked about that before, about the plan of salvation, that how wonderful it is that if, if salvation was to be for sale, nobody could afford it. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You could never afford salvation. Everybody needs salvation, but nobody can afford salvation. We would have had to pay death to, make, to purchase salvation. There's no way that, that can be done. Uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the penalty was paid because God decorated a tree with his only begotten son. The ornament of grace was on that tree. The ornament of forgiveness was on that tree. The Bible says that when Jesus was on the cross, he made seven statements, seven statements. One of those statements, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And that was a, as, as a continual statement is the tense of the way that that was said. Then that God was saying, God, forgive them. God, forgive them. I'm glad that forgiveness is hung upon the cross of Calvary. The love that is, is what the, the tree that God decorated was decorated with love. And I remember as, um, as a young boy growing up, we didn't have a whole lot. I, I knew that. I remember some people think this is crazy, but our basement was kind of humid and musty and all that kind of stuff. So we used to have the glass ornaments. And we would have to take, I remember filling the bathtub with water and washing the ornaments because we couldn't afford to go out and buy new ones. It was just the way we did that we had to do things. But I, you know, I didn't know that that wasn't the normal because it wasn't that the ornaments were important. It wasn't the trees that were important. important. The thing that was important to us at Christmas time is we had love. We knew we were loved. We may not have had the finest clothes. We may not have had the... Uh, nicest things and the newest things. I remember getting some of the necessary things, you know, clothing for Christmas. I remember we was talking about those bicycles and my mind went back to Christmas when every one of us got a bike uh, for Christmas. Every one of us in the house got a bike. And uh, interesting about it is they were used. I mean, we didn't know where they came from, Goodwill or wherever. It didn't matter. We got a bike. You know, it wasn't the gift. It was the love that was given, that, that atmosphere of love that it was given to us. And see, that's important. God gave us uh, th this tree and decorated this tree with love. God didn't come to this world to condemn the world. Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I hear people make statements sometimes that are a little bit frustrating because they don't understand the love of God. They say, well, I don't believe God would send anybody to hell. I agree with you. I don't believe God will send anybody to hell. I believe anybody that goes to hell chooses to go there. He said, well, I wouldn't choose to go there. Well, your lack of choosing Christ is your choice to go to hell. There's a, a way, and I've, I've shared this simple illustration before. When I pull out of the studios here at LJ and, and uh, ETC3, if I want to go to IHOP, let's say, 
and I want to, if I want to go, the best way for me to get there is to turn left and go up to the second road, I believe it is, and turn left, go up by the Ford dealership, come out to the four lane, and turn right, and I'll see IHOP out there on the, on the uh, left. So if you were to ask me, how, how do I get to IHOP? And I tell you to turn left out of this parking lot, and I go down to the road that goes up by the Ford dealership and turn left, and then go up to the stop sign, turn right on the four lane, and you'll see IHOP out there on the left. Now, if you were to take and hear that instruction from me, and I say, that's the way you need to go, if you were to go out here instead of turning left and you t decided you're going to go right, did I send you that way? Absolutely not. I told you to go the other way, and I and encouraged you to go the other way, but you decided to take that right turn. See, Jesus is the only way. He said in uh, John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God gave his only begotten son, decorated this tree with his only begotten son, decorated with love. He loved you enough that he sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins. And he's saying the only way to heaven is to go this route, take Jesus Christ. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, he didn't send you anywhere. You chose to go a different route. And the Bible says anybody that tries to get into heaven any other way is, a, is the same as a thief and a robber. And so don't forget that. God didn't send anybody there. God loved you enough that he sent Jesus Christ to decorate this tree, the tree of Calvary, the cross of Calvary, with his only begotten son. He did it with love. In John chapter 1, we find out that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. There, there is a light on the tree. It's one light. It's Jesus Christ. And that light came into the world to shine in darkness, to show us our need of a Savior. So we have the love, we have the light, and we have the lasting effects. Here we are 2,000 years later, and this tree is still the most recognized tree in the history of mankind. There are, there are so many emblems. There's rings that uh, have the symbol of the cross. There are necklaces. There are just crucifix around that people hang on the, on the wall. You go by a church and maybe a steeple, and on the top of that steeple you see a cross. On the side of a church you see a cross. You see people using the cross as a signal on their business cards. A uh, symbol on their business cards. You see crosses everywhere you go. People now have shirts that have crosses. And what I'm saying is it's the most recognized emblem, I think, in the history of man is when it comes down to the, this tree. Wouldn't it be something if your tree just lasted for a generation and people said, well, man, you should have seen that tree at their house. This is the tree that has lasted and lasted and lasted. You can think of the colors on this tree, uh, the red of the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. See, in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice lambs over and over and over and over again. But Jesus Christ came and he shed his own blood that we could be saved because there had to be the shedding of blood of a spotless lamb. Jesus was that spotless lamb. This tree is decorated with love. This tree is decorated with the light. And it's tree that, that is decorated that has lasted. What a symbol. To, for year to year, day by day, we see crosses all the time. Simply, you go down the road and somebody maybe have passed away in a certain area. They put a cross right there. It's an emblem that shows that there's hope beyond the grave. There's hope beyond death because Jesus Christ died for us. God decorated a tree and he decorated that tree for you. God sent his son in this world to die for you. I'm glad, as I said in the last couple weeks' messages, that Christ came to the world, that he came to the entire world. But you need to realize that Christ came to the world to die for you. God loves you that much. You're that special to God. I put that up on my Facebook not the, uh, just the other day, that yes, uh, the good tidings of great joy were that... Uh, that the Savior was coming to the world, but he said, unto you is born. It goes from just uh, being a joy to all people, as the Bible says, as it becomes unto you. It becomes personal. Now, thinking of Christmas and thinking of the tree, there could be a lot of gifts, and God gave his only begotten son to die for you on the cross, and that's great. But one of the most tragic things about this gift is some people never receive it, never receive this gift. The only way to have the benefit of the gift of God that God gave to you on this tree, Jesus Christ, is you have to accept it and, and receive that. That's the only thing you have to do and accept him as your personal savior. And then therefore you can have eternal life. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And here it is, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, the verse number 17 says, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then verse number 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You must trust Jesus Christ, the gift. God decorated a tree with his only begotten Son, and as he died on that cross, he died for your sins and my sins. He was a gift to you, but do you have to you have to accept him and you have to receive that gift. And I encourage you to do that today. For those of you that have done that, this would be a great season to thank the Lord for the greatest gift that was ever given. You hear about people saying the gift that keeps on giving, that's Jesus Christ. He never wears out. He never, he never has to be returned. He never has to get a refund. A refund. You're, you're saved eternal because it's everlasting life. Let's pray. Father, I pray thanking you for the grace of God that bringeth salvation to all men. Lord, thank you for that we have John 3.16 that tells us that God so loved the world. Lord, that you loved the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son. You decorated a tree called Calvary with Jesus Christ, your Son. And as his blood flowed down, he was shedding that blood for us because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. We're all sinners. Lord, we realize we need a Savior. And there's some people today, Lord, that maybe they've been religious, maybe they've attended churches, but they've never accepted Christ as their personal Savior. I pray that today would be the glad day that they would accept Jesus Christ. Lord, not just know that he died, but accept him as their own personal Savior. They would call out to him right now, even in this time of prayer, and just say, Father, I know I'm a sinner. I ask God to for ask you to forgive me of my sin and ask Jesus to come into my heart and save me. Lord, knowing that if they say that in their spirit and they really mean that, that they too can be saved today. And then those of us that are saved, as we've enjoyed this gift year after year, you've been so good to us. Thank you for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for Jesus dying, but Lord, also rising up and now being our resurrected Savior. Lord, I pray this Christmas people would accept this free gift that you've given to all of us in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, Brother Matt's going to do a song. and I I'm excited. I want to read that book. But today, today is a special day for me, and I'm going to get to read that book. Um, I have a saying today that I think is very appropriate, and then we're going to go to a song that I hope will lift your spirits because it's called Jesus Called. It is by Dwight Sanford. He did it in honor and in memory of his mom. So here we go. They never want to discuss what triggered you, just how you reacted. Be careful what you do to other people because um, often you will be the reason that something turns terribly wrong and you could uh, make a difference in somebody's life. Be the reason that you make a difference in somebody's life, not to harm them. We're going to go now to a song that says it all, Jesus Called.
They're gathered in joy and hand in hand. Someone with trouble singing sweet harmony. She'll help them on the part just the way she used to be. And if someone needs a friend just to sit and talk with them, she'll answer. It's 3 a.m. Yes, I'll bet they're singing in heaven tonight. They're gathered in on heaven's shining shore. Sure, call to 